At a time when the old and faithful piston-engined aircraft is retiring from the scene, airline operators are turning to something new to solve their problems. That something new is the propeller turbine airliner. And here in the Vickers Viscount is the first of its kind in the world. Production is already underway for a fleet of Viscounts for British European Airways and for various foreign operators. By far the densest airline traffic everywhere is over stage lengths of up to a thousand miles or so. It is precisely over such ranges that the propeller turbine comes into its own, leaving the pure jet to cater for long distance routes. Operating at a height of some 25,000 feet, the Viscount carries its passengers, crew and freight in a pressurized fuselage with a climate of its own, independent of outside conditions and temperatures. Yes, that's right, she is flying on one engine. Let's go back for a moment to the early design stages. When laying down the project for a new airliner, the designer has to bear in mind three groups of people. First, the passengers, who demand the highest standards of comfort, regularity and safety. Then, the crew, who have to fly the aircraft. And finally, the operators, who have to satisfy all parties and at the same time make a profit. With these considerations in mind, and complete freedom in the choice of power plant, the Vickers design team began work on the Viscount in 1945. They were creating, in fact, not a mere stopgap between the piston age and the jet age, but a new type with a definite function of its own. And in the summer of 1948, the Viscount prototype with four Rolls-Royce Dart engines took the air. The first propeller turbine airliner was news. Almost overnight, the Viscount became famous and was enthusiastically acclaimed in all quarters. The company's test pilots were kept busy on demonstration flights, and it soon became apparent that the newcomer had revolutionized all previous conceptions of air travel. No, this is not a new gambling game. It's just a way of proving the remarkable absence of vibration during flight. This factor and the lack of engine noise in the cabin constitute a real advance in air transport luxury. In March 1950, the prototype set out on a European demonstration tour. Here is Lord Douglas, chairman of BEA, saying goodbye to Sir Hugh and Lady Kilner as they leave for Amsterdam on the first stage of a tour visiting many important capital cities. Later on, the aircraft flew to the Sudan for tropical trials. Water methanol injection is used to assist operation in the tropics and from high-level airfields. The acid test came when, during the peak traffic period, the Viscount prototype ran on scheduled BEA passenger services from North Holt to the continent and on internal routes. Among the passengers on the first flight to Paris are Sir Frank Whittle, jet engine pioneer, and Mr. George Edwards, designer of the Viscount. Meanwhile, well, perhaps the less said about the customs, the better. To celebrate the historic occasion, BEA refunded the fare to the lucky first passenger to travel by propeller turbine airliner. BEA's Viscounts, by the way, will be known as the Discovery class. May we repeat that the propeller turbine is not just a sort of stand-in for the pure jet. The air screw is still considered the most efficient medium for transforming power into thrust. Pure jet fuel reserves for standoff and diversion are heavy, and operating costs rise sharply with range variation. For the Viscount, on the other hand, they remain remarkably steady over a wide range band.
you'll notice that two engines are cut while taxiing. Standoff is also carried out on two engines with a consequent saving in fuel. Note the twin wheels for safety. This BEA assignment lasted several weeks and all concerned agreed that the Viscount had proved once and for all its practical value in operation. Meanwhile, the firm of Rolls-Royce had developed the Dart RDA3 engine, increasing the original 1,000 horsepower to 1,400. Here was a chance to make a good job even better and to enlarge the production model. And so, in 1949, work began in the shops on the first of the Viscount 700 series. Here, at Weybridge, are all the resources of a great organization that has produced so many famous aircraft all the skill of the individual craftsmen, still so essential to turning out a first-class job. This is the mould loft, where the main frames and bulkheads are set out, taking shape one by one on the jigs in the metal shop. All over the factory, other parts are being manufactured. Here is a jet pipe for one of the engines. And here, in the erecting shop, a tailplane is being assembled to the fuselage now on the assembly line. This is closely followed by the imposing fin and rudder, assembled as a single unit. As with the tailplane, the fixed fin has only three main attachment points, so that replacements can be carried out simply and speedily. The all-metal, stressed skin construction of all components makes for robustness and raises no special problems for operators. Here, the outer plane is being hoisted into place. All the fuel, by the way, is carried in the wings in flexible, crash-proof tanks. Now the new Viscount begins to take shape. With an all-up weight of 52,500 pounds, the production model is over six feet longer than the prototype and has an extra five feet in span. Additional power and design development have increased the performance accordingly. A quick turnaround between flights has been assured. Freight and baggage doors are numerous, well distributed and away from passenger exits, allowing smooth, simultaneous loading. Four engine safety is enhanced by high lift flaps and of course by the use of kerosene fuel. petal-type cowlings, naturally. Note how handling is simplified by hinging the top and bottom panels fore and aft. The power plant change takes half an hour under operating conditions. And a complete refueling, 1,720 gallons, can be carried out in 10 minutes. Cockpit layout is simple and compact. Standard seating is for 40 or 48, but up to 53 passengers or extra freight capacity can be arranged for. It is the individual passenger, however, who is the final judge. For many years now, operators have been in need of an airliner that, by offering entirely new standards of comfort and safety, would persuade more and more travelers to go by air. The Viscount provides this opportunity.